two people, Sean Emmett and Steve Hislop. Now, Hizzy could and probably should have wrapped things up there and then, but as he faded, Sean Emmett snatched two vital second places to keep the championship well and truly alive. Oh, a wide, wide, wide sweep through there by Hislop. Hislop going wide, letting the two Virgin Mobile Yamahas go through there. Richards has got past number two, Steve Hislop. The championship leader is just dropping backwards and backwards. Well, what is Steve Hislop doing? Confusion never stops. Closing walls. And Hislop has the pack crawling all over him again. Is he going to keep forcing on or will he crumble under the pressure? Another place back for Steve Hislop. What is happening to him at Murray Park here today? Well, I'm now joined by Sean Emmett and Steve Hislop. Steve, Mallory Park, what happened to you? Well, in the first race, I had a genuine tyre problem. The rear tyre was uh, just chatting away, and I could hardly even get the bike to turn in. Second race, no tyre problems. I don't know. I think somebody was controlling me with strings, and it was the wrong direction, that's for sure. And it was almost worst-case scenario, because having Sean taken a couple of seconds... Yeah, really Sean had a couple of fantastic rides at Mallory, you know, two second places. It's so tight there anyway, and, of course, he... he he grabbed some points back on me, you know, when I could have maybe had it all wrapped up. Well, you did say during the week in the press that you'll never win this thing. Yeah, well, the press have kind of ripped me off this last couple of weeks, and a lot of it was, it wasn't untrue, but they, they can really go to, go to town sometimes. But, uh, no, I mean, at the end of the day, I let them write what they want, and, you know, it was just getting my back up to come here and do well. And uh, I basically approached this weekend a lot. You know, I've been training a bit harder again, and uh, I was de determined to, to go out and do well, and I've pretty much been quickest all weekend and setting a good pace. Well, now, the maths on the whole thing, we could take us all day to work out the various variations of winning it, but I think if you, as long as you finish with two ninths this weekend, you, Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, irrelevant of whoever won the first race, second, you know, or whatever, uh, you know, if I was... If I get 13 points, so that's fourth place in the first race, I'm British champion. If Sean wins both races, I can be British champion by trundling round in ninth. But you never know, this weather might turn sour. Bite might break down, I might get caught out and knocked off. You never know. That's not in your character, though, is it? It's just uh, trundle around? No. Hopefully, I can go out and do well in the first race and get it all wrapped up. I don't think Sean's going to let you trundle around. <laughs> no, no, I mean, all I can do is, is try and win. And um, if Steve's at the front, obviously, I'm going to try and finish ahead of him. But even though it's irrelevant, if he does finish, so. Um, I'm just going to run my own race, and uh, you know, Steve, he, he should, you know, unless he has an absolute nightmare like breakdowns and stuff, or he's really unlucky, then you know, he should be okay. But uh, all I can do is do the best I can, and hopefully get some wins, which would be nice for me and Yamaha, and um, and also to protect myself in second because uh, Michael's not too far behind. So, you know, I'm fairly mindful of that. Um, first and foremost, try and you know, see what I can do. You know, it's only me or Steve that can win it now, so um, I may as well go for it. But. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then I've got to make sure, you know, I don't end up in third. Well, you are riding very aggressively at the moment. Are we going to see more of that? Well, yeah, you may as well go up with a bang, eh? <laughs> if I'm not going to win it, I'm going to, you know, at least look good. So, um, we'll see. And uh, just to kind of round things up, you've both had ups and downs this season, but yours have been a little more severe than most. Are you surprised you're in this position, still challenging? Yeah, I must admit, I, you know, I'm fairly, I'm always optimistic and, and fairly um, philosophical about things. And, and I did think that when the team I had to change teams to Yamaha and it's a totally different bike and it's been years since I've ridden one and they hadn't run a race as, as yet so I thought well you know I'm in for a difficult task here so I'm pretty pleased with the way it's run to, to have managed to sort of stay in there and, and bring it on to the final round I think it's great for the series and um, and it's good for Yamaha you know they, they've had some wins now Steve Plates won a couple and I've been up there on the roster pretty regularly to be fair on it so um, the bike's good and, and I've obviously taken to it pretty well so um, I'm just pleased. I must admit, I'm slightly surprised to still be in there with it, with a, even a small chance um, in the last round. But uh, you know, it's pleased. Just the way I've been this year, I've just dug in every weekend I've been there, and that's that's what makes you know. Steve and I both had 16 rostrums, and, and that's consistency, and, and that's why we're here. You know, heading the champ or you know the top two in the championship. Okay, well, still yeah. two races to go. Yeah, and I just look like I've made a hard job of winning a championship. <laughs> I've dragged it on too long. We will see, it's all going to happen out there. Yeah. Donington Park, Steve Parrish is going to show us around with the flying lap.
Well, this is a lap of the 2.5 mile Grand Prix circuit here at Donington and it's down through the gears into second gear for Redgate Corner, a long, long right-hander. As you come out of Redgate, it's up through the gears, short shifting through the gears, down towards Craner Curve and the left-hander, the first left-hander on the circuit. This is taken in third gear, easy to lose the front as you go in there and you let it run wide then drag the bike back over to the left-hand side for the old hairpin, down into second. As you come out of here, the track starts to climb. It's up and under underneath the bridge here on the fast left-hander at Schwantz Curve, third gear, back down through the gears into the right-hander, second gear for McLean's, bumpy as you go in there, cement dust on the right-hand side, coming out of there, second up into third gear, as you come over the top of the hill, there is the corner, just there, you see it on your right-hand side, Coppy's corner, third gear, revs very low at this point, and it builds up all the way out of here, now we're onto the fastest part of the circuit, under the Dunlop Bridge, fifth gear, about 160 miles now before slamming the brakes on all the way down into first gear. For Fogarty's S's, it's left and then right, flicking it through here. Very easy to lose the back as you spin it up, coming out of here. A drag race now, down towards the Melbourne Loop, and you get up into third, but back down into first gear again for Melbourne Loop. This is a 180-degree corner as you come around of here. Getting a good exit is vital. Climbing again, up the hill, right up towards the left-hander at Goddard's, and coming into this corner again, it's very, very bumpy through here, and you have to really clip the curb on the left side. There you go, as you get the drag out of here over the start and finish line. That is a lap. Sean Emmett came here to Donington with a very clear understanding of what he had to do and that was challenge Steve Hislop for the championship. In second place with a 37 point deficit he needed pole position or at least second to challenge for that title. However it was bad for him second row and fifth. Third in the title chase, Michael Rutter, on a very quick Ducati, had scorched round here in qualifying and knew he was on a chance of a pole position, squeezed as hard as he could, but marginally slower than Hislop, who was to come last and next. Earlier in the day, the championship leader had set an all-time fastest lap round here at Donington Park, going quicker than Valentino Rossi. His Super Pole lap, a touch slower, but at 131.6, good enough for pole position, and he was going to be very hard to beat. There it is, confirmation of the front row. Hislop, Rutter, Bernard Reynolds. Emmett slips to fifth fastest, second row with Paul Brown, Richards and Dean Ellison. Looking at the third row then, Gary Mason heads that off with Harris, Thomas and Crawford. Steve Plater, disastrous there, alongside Crafar on row four. Well, this is a big weekend for you. We won't talk any more about that, but tomorrow the race, how are you going to approach it? I would love to win the championship by winning the first race. You know, I'm out to silence all the critics that's ripped me apart this last two, three weeks. Well, the skies are grey over Donington, but that by no means reflects the mood on the grid. It is electric here for the penultimate race in this year's championship. One man who's, I'm sure, very happy to be here is Paul Brown. Paul, it's good to have you back. How come you're back? Uh, it's good to be back to start with, but um, IFC and D&B Racing have got the reds together to try and get me out for the last round, and here we are. Of course, you haven't been here since IFC collapsed some months ago. How's it feel to be back on the grid? They didn't actually collapse, it's just we're in a bit of trouble, but it's all sorted now. We'll be back for next year, but it's, it's good to be here. I forgot what it's like. Well, good luck. Of course, he's alongside his ex-teammate, Sean Emmett. Sean, of course, very keen to do well this weekend. He did say to me he's really going to go for it, and when Sean Emmett says that, he really means it. Now, we'll just go up to Michael Rutter here. Of course, Michael now challenging for second place. Busy around him. I'll just nip around this side. Michael, quick word, how are you feeling? Yeah, all right, you know, not too bad. Um, you know, just see how it goes, really. Um, Got to go out there, try and put a few good laps in it and uh, see what happens. I mean, you are here to get second place. Yeah, that's it, like, you know, I'm not worried about it too much. Uh, I can't go any lower than where I am, so I just go out there and try and win the race, and uh, that's all I can do. OK, Michael, good luck. Of course, alongside him, the man of the moment there, Steve Hislop. A lot of pressure on his shoulders at the moment, but he is determined to do this in race one. So let's join our commentary team of Steve Parrish and Barry Nutley. Steve Hislop's pole position time of 131.6 is 1.8 inside Troy Corsa's lap record, which stands from 1996. Surely that will go today as away they go here on the first of 20 laps at Donington Park. 
in the penultimate race in the 2002 Motorcycle News British Superbike Championship. Away out of Hollywood and down through Craner Curves for the first time, the distinctive, popular, familiar, yellow-helmeted Steve Hislop leads. John Reynolds, the outgoing champion with number one on the Rizla Suzuki, is there in second place. Michael Rutter, the second fastest in qualifying on the Renegade Ducati, is in third. So Ducati leads, Suzuki second. Hislop starting as he means to go on. There's a bit of dust, somebody dragging their knee on the corner there, kicking up some dust. At Coppice then, Hislop for the first time, leading the 25 strong pack. I heard something in my headphones there. I'm sure someone, someone's down. I'm sure there was something in the background there, but away they go then, under the Dunlop Bridge. And Shane Byrne, Shane Byrne in the gravel at Coppice. That is catastrophic for him, Steve. Not the way to start the penultimate race here. Yeah, you could just assume it was maybe a cold tire as he came around there into Coppice Corner. So, yeah, not the way for him to finish his season, not for sure. But there's John Reynolds, number one, having a look down the inside. New colours for the Rizzler team this weekend as he chases after Steve Hislop. Hislop will be nervous at this point. He wants to take this championship in race one, but he doesn't need to fall off. And look at number three there, Sean Emmett. Down the inside as he goes into Goddard's Corner. Sean Emmett is absolutely on a charge. When we saw him on the grid there, his eyes looked so focused. He looked very, very determined today. Well, of course, he has to be because the gap, 37 points, as I said earlier. Hislop is on 416. And Sean Emmett there in unusual leathers. We don't usually see him in grey leathers. He's looking a bit Steve Plater-esque at the moment in grey leathers. He is on 379, so he trails Steve Hislop by 37 points. He knows nothing short of a race win through. Again, he goes on the inside underneath the number one Suzuki of John Reynolds. So Sean Emmett, number three on the Virgin Mobile Yamaha, up to second and hunting down Steve Hislop, who has been riding so coolly all weekend, but he must stay cool during the race. Well, this is the pass down into the old hairpin, and he has so much confidence on the front end of that Yamaha. He's just sticking it down the inside on board again now with Emmett. Down the inside of John Reynolds, he just turns the bike nicely, clips the apex on the inside there, really is very much at home on that Yamaha now. Emmett getting faster and faster on the brakes really close right up the back of his lob is he going to get through no that was so close in fact Sean Emmett nearly ran in the back of number two his lot there it made him go wide and John Reynolds is right on the back of him again now well that's about as close as it gets and in recent weeks of course recent races oh they're all bunching up Emmett fighting off Reynolds right over the rear end snaking on the Ducati the number six Ducati there in fourth place. He's come up to play as well. So it is very much an eight-wheeler. But I was about to say, in recent weeks, in recent races, if there'd been a man of the match award, Sean Emmett would have got it because he adapted to that four-cylinder bike remarkably mid-season. And he's just got quicker and quicker and quicker. And fair play to Rob McElnay and the Yamaha team for giving him the tools to do the job. And he means business. He knows he can win this championship. But if, first of all, he has to win this race and hope that some misfortune or just Steve Hislop just his bottle goes and the others begin to nail him just as they did at Mallory and through making Hislop sit up have to move his knee Emmett leads his game plan is unfolding absolutely you're dead right about that he's in the lead and that's exactly what he has to do that's all he can do is win the race and hope something goes wrong with Hislop and he was so close again into the old hairpin very very confident down we're on board now with Hislop so Sean Emmett's on the inside of us here there he goes underneath Steve Hislop so fast. Now we're on board with Emmett. You can see him come down the inside just again, keeping the bike nicely planted through there. So number three, Sean Emmett leads this race in the early stages and absolutely flying already, starting to pull away. Well, there are 28,000 people here at Donington Park and this is exactly what they've come to see. Emmett giving a really, really good fight to the championship leader, Steve Hislop, who knows that a top four finish, and that's basically what it means, a top four finish for number two, Hislop, as Rutter moves into third and displaces Reynolds, who is fighting back, and will he squeeze Rutter wide? They're side by side, up pops the wheel of the Suzuki. Rutter's on the inside line for Goddard's though. He's up to third. Emmett on the Yamaha leads the race then, Hislop in second, Rutter in third, but Hislop knows that's all he needs to do, so long as he stays out of trouble, stays in the top four, but Emmett leads into Redgate.
Yeah, down into second gear again at this point. And as you come out, it's a great view now of Sean Emmett looking from his lot. The bike starts sliding. It's a short shift changing up early and quickly through here. And you can see the rear end of that bike starting to slide as you flick it through the left. Very easy to lose the front there. It goes extremely light as you drop down the hill. Again, into the old hairpin. This is where Emmett's very fast. Now, his lot's learning from him because his lot didn't lose a lot of ground that time around. He must have learned that fast line from Sean Emmett. Now, it's through the fast left before slamming the brakes on again down into second gear for the bumpy McLean's corner. His lot closing a little bit there on the brakes. Up the hill again towards Coppice, which is a strange corner. It has three apexes. You really clip the first one just there and then let the bike drift out, miss the second one and then come close to the third one. As you exit this corner, it's really all about getting on the power. Well, the Yamaha of Emmett was drifting out of Coppice. That gap is now whittled away by five points. Just 32 points now. Emmett trails his slot by, so he's got to keep piling on the coals. He's got a pile. Unbelievable. What a huge crash. A big high side. Emmett just piled on the coals, just as I said it, literally too quickly. That is a big crash of my goodness me. It was very, very fortunate for Steve Hislop that he wasn't just a tad closer because Steve, it could, well, he's walking away. Thank goodness for that. That was a very big crash. It's a massive accident. Second gear there on the R1 Yamaha, and he just spun it up as he came out of the corner there, just tapped the power on. This is from another angle, and you can see a huge black line there as he tries to put 180 brake horsepower down, and it didn't want to know. Fired him out the seat. Sean Emmett came down very, very heavily. Look how high he's trying to run at about 60 miles an hour, hitting the ground very, very hard with his ankles and his wrists, for that matter. A huge accident there, and that's dropped Steve Hislop right the way back to third now as he nearly hit him. He was very lucky not to get collected in the debris there. That's put Michael Rutter, number six, firmly in the lead. John Reynolds, of course, was sitting there waiting for something to happen. He's right there in second place now with renewed vigor. Let me say at this point, John Reynolds is not a fit man this weekend. He's got a back problem. He's got flu. His eyes are swollen. He's not breathing terribly well. So he's doing an immense job in second place. His slot knows now that forget third, forget fourth. His main championship rival, Sean Emmett, has crashed out not to return to the proceedings here uh, certainly in race one and it's unlikely that Emmett will take part in race two but we will let you know the situation meanwhile at the front there's his stop in third place number two all he has to do now effectively Steve is right around well, he's actually won the championship now. Emmett was the only threat to him. Steve Hislop will have seen that accident. He nearly hit that accident. He will now know he is British champion. There is no way that Sean Emmett can do anything about it at all. I suspect that his pit crew will be putting a board out shortly to inform him exactly of that. Well, the other significant thing, of course, that this man, Michael Rutter, will move into second place in the title standings by three and a half points over Emmett. Last lap, two and a half miles then of Donington Park to complete. Michael Rutter moving into second place. There is the new champion, provided he completes this last tour of the circuit safely. And knowing this 40-year-old veteran, with all that wisdom under that yellow helmet, Steve, he's not going to screw up now, sure. Certainly won't be. He'll be smiling. There's nobody close behind him. He can't do anything about the two guys out in front. Just going around, getting himself on the podium will be a fitting end to this championship for him. I know there's another race later on, but nevertheless, it's been an up-and-down season for Steve Hislop. He has struggled on one or two events. He's been immensely strong at some of them. He really is an incredible rider. When he's on form, he's completely unbeatable. This weekend, though, all he has had to do was get some good solid results and that's exactly what he's doing. Well I don't think there's anyone here at Donington who begrudges Steve Hislop this title in 2002. He looked every inch the champion from the word go. He was right up there leading the title chase last year when he torpedoed John Reynolds as a result of a misgear in that well-documented incident at Rockingham. So the title is justly and deservedly his. Steve Hislop with half a lap to go Steve just take us round. Well, yeah, he's, you can just see now he's backed the pace off. As I said, there's no one behind him. He's coming through those Fogarty S's. That was where Sean Emmett crashed. This is your leader, Michael Rutter, number six, taking another win this season. If he'd have started a little bit stronger this year, he would have been a bigger threat, there's no question about it, to Steve Hislop. Reynolds lifts the front wheel. He's really not chasing anywhere. So this race just coming to a close right now, and Rutter's going to take the win. And it's been all about consistency. Steve Hislop has only had one did not finish, one retirement. Rutter's going to take the win. He's actually uh, retired three times. And uh, there's your champion with a massive wheelie. Steve Hislop crosses the line. He knows that championship 
firmly in his pocket. Third in the race was good enough, but there is the winner, Michael Rutter on the Team Renegade Ducati. But jubilation and huge relief from Paul Bird in the Monster Mob pit. His man has done it, he's brought him home the bacon. There it is. Resident in the Isle of Man, he might be Steve Hislop, but he's proudly carrying the Scottish flag on his victory lap. He last won this title in 1995, and here we are seven years later, the 2002 British Superbike Championship is Steve Hislop's, not without a few hiccups along the way, but no one is more delighted than the man himself, and there is the race result confirmed. Rutter, Hislop third, good enough, Reynolds second, Glenn Richards, sensational on the 750cc, Kawasaki, Crafar, Crawford, back to form. Mason there in 10th place, Phil Giles, Lee Jackson, and young John Kirkham scores more points in 13th. The final standings then, after race one here at Donington, an unassailable lead, the championship is his. His slot, Rutter moves into second, as I said. Emmett, injured, is in third, but he will not lose third place. Congratulations, 2002 British champion. Oh, fantastic. I mean, that was a hard race because uh, yeah, I think I chose the wrong compounded tyre. It was just sliding all over. You know, I got a great start. I wanted to get away, but the early pace was just like, I just had to control it with what I had grip-wise. But uh, I don't care. You know, Sean came past. Even then, I was happy enough if I'd been in the top four, you know. But um, when Sean fell off, I nearly ran over him. You know, his bike, I nearly copped it. But uh, fantastic. You know, I was happy with third. That would do me, you know. It looked like you were happy to sit, be sit behind Sean and let him bring you home to the championship. Yeah, I, I was the care. And I mean, if, even if JR and, and uh, Michael had came past, I would have been happy with fourth for the title. But uh, Sean flicked, flicked off, and that was it, you know. So how are you feeling? Rockingham feels like a long way away now. Oh, definitely. I, <laughs> I feel like I've waited a long time for this. So fantastic. Fantastic. Well, John, quite fitting, quite poignant that you should be up on the podium today when Steve is a uh, crown champion. Yeah, I must admit, you know, it's great because uh, yeah, I like, I like, you know, I just enjoyed uh, giving him the number one plate, and he deserves it. You know, he's worked really hard all year, and uh, he's been fast. Well, Michael, it looks like Sean won't be in race two, making you um, second place in the championship. Yeah, you know, you never, you never know. Like Sean's a, a strong and an hard man. Like you know, he'll be out there if he can. If they can patch him up and uh, stick him out there, he'll be out there. So. It's not over yet, uh, we'll just wait and see. Well, Michael Rutter might have won the race, but Steve Hislop has won the championship, and John Reynolds congratulating him and handing over, what a lovely gesture, the old number one plate. Hislop's smile tells the story. Well, I'm now in John Reynolds' garage with the reigning champion himself. John, difficult day for you today, probably, seeing your, your, your title go. Well, you know, I've been, I've known about it for quite a while now, so I've sort of prepared myself for this day. But uh, it was just nice to be on the podium and actually present uh, Steve with the number one plate that I've been running all year. So uh, I, I think really he couldn't have gone to a better player. I'd imagine for your own psyche, that's quite important for you to be on the podium today. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, it is every every weekend anyway. That's what I'm paid to do. But um, especially here this weekend, yeah. I mean, I want to go out on a high, and uh, it'd be nice to win both races. But uh, one would do. How did it feel today? As the, as the reigning champion, to see the championship be, be decided around you, but there's actually nothing you can do, you're not involved. How does that feel? Yeah, funny, funny you say that actually, because uh, I had uh, Sean, well, I had Steve Hizz up in front of me, and then Sean came past, and I thought, well, to be fair, it's their championship. And I was just, I, I knew something was going to happen, I just knew it, because I could see the way Sean was riding, out of his skin, basically, and uh, I knew something was going to happen, so I thought I'd just sit back and wait for the pick up the pieces. Of course, it did. And then uh, Michael came into, into play, and uh, Again, he, he's up for second place now, I think he's got it, but um, yeah, again, you know, all I'm racing for now is just for race, race wins, uh, you know, I'm not in the championship as you rightly say, but just enjoying it anyway. Steve Hislop has said if he, well he's won it, <laughs> he wants to defend that number one plate next year. That, that clearly, let's be honest, wasn't your plan. You knew you were on a bike that needed a lot of development. Do you think that might have been a strange decision? To, to ride the Suzuki this year? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think I needed a new challenge. The challenge was great. Suzuki is a great company to work for, and uh, you know I've never looked back. I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, it's good fun. The bikes. Uh, it was a good bike to start with. It's actually turned into an absolute superb race bike now, thanks to the team. You know, it's, it's just a good job. And hopefully now we're going to develop the bike, and uh, they've got a new one coming out next year, and we'll hit the ground running, and uh, we'll be right on top of the game. As you said, you've always been very practical about this season. You knew there was going to be a lot of development work. Review your season in short for me. Well, I've just loaned that number one plate to Steve Islop, and he knows that. So uh, next year we're going to be out there, all guns blazing, and uh, on for it again. 
Talk to me about race two. What's your plan? Again, I haven't really got a plan. I mean, it's just a matter of getting a good start and uh, chipping away. Uh, it's a long, long race, you know. It's probably one of the longest races in the calendar this year, and it's probably one of the most physical circuits as well. But I'm not feeling that brilliant, so I'm just, I'll just get gritting my teeth and going as long as I can, for as, hard, or as hard as I can, for as long as I can. But we are going to see you on the Rizla Crescent Suzuki next year for Dirt. I'd like to think so. I've not signed any contract yet, but um, I'll certainly love to be there, that's for sure. Yeah, I've, I've got this unfinished business, and we all know that. We all know that we can do it, and uh, we need to be there. Okay, well, there's also unfinished business in race two, so I'll uh, let you get ready for that. Yeah, cheers, Craig. Thank you. Well, race two and the sun is out. It's certainly shining on the birthday boy here. He finished fourth in race one. Great result for him. And by the looks of things, he's just got his birthday present. Well done, Glenn. An update on Sean Emmett, who of course crashed out in race one. He broke his collarbone, broke his wrist. He will not be taking part in race two. That means the top three in the championship has been decided. Third place, Sean Emmett. Second place, Michael Rutter. First place, of course, Steve Hislop. That doesn't mean the racing's over, though. Traditionally, the last race of the season is where they fight for next year's contracts and they race for pride. So, over to the commentary team of Steve Parrish and Barry Nutley. Thank you, Craig, and what a season it has been. Wonderfully sunny weather now. Watch the lights in the top of your picture as they go out, away they go. The pressure's off everybody here, as Craig said. Let's forget the points. This is really a race for personal honour and pride, and Michael Rutter would like to do the double here. Steve Hislop, number two, the new champion, would like to go out in style with a win. Reynolds, number one, the outgoing champion, also has something to prove, and you can bet your boots that he will start the 2003 season where he left off this year, Steve, on the Suzuki, and it's been going stronger and stronger. Yeah, it's been an uphill struggle for sure. He came off of that Ducati, which is a race bike, purely built for racing onto the Suzuki. The Crescent team have done a great job developing the bike and it has got better and better as the season has gone on. But it's been a learning curve very much for the whole team and especially for John Reynolds. But he'll be out, as we heard him say earlier, fighting next year and they're fighting at the front already, these two. Rutter leads this race. His lot for sure would love to win this race. I know he would. There's no points at stake, as you say. He has that championship and I'm sure he'd be keen to take this race win. Well, worthy of a mention here in fifth place, number five, Paul Brown. New livery on his Ducati the former IFC rider on the IFC machinery. There's a change in position there. Shaky Byrne has gone up to third past John Reynolds, but Paul Brown running under D&B livery, the number five bike. So for the day, he's teammate to Dean Ellison. Reynolds claims third place back from number eight, Shane Byrne. Paul Brown is sniffing there, establishing his credentials as a British superbike regular. He's been a good, good rider this year, Paul Brown. Ninth place in the championship he was coming here. He really won't do any worse than that because he had such a strong first half of the season. Wow, Shaky Byrne up on the kerbs over the grass here. We see him trying very, very hard. Now, of course, Shaky Byrne crashed in the first race. Still having a real ding-dong battle there with the ex-champion now, John Reynolds, who's got that number one plate for about another 18 laps. And there he goes, as you say, Paul Brown really pushing hard as with uh, Glenn Richards. We're on board now with Hislop, who nearly runs in the back of Michael Rutter going through Craner Curves and now down into the old hairpin. So Hislop's on the outside he'll struggle to pass here Rutter has the inside line as they go under the bridge there into Schwanzko but this time his lot is on the inside oh they're as hard as nails this pair utmost respect and trust in each other we've said it so many times but it doesn't get any closer than it has between these two in recent weeks but Hislop then showing Rutter his tail end. The new champion wearing a different helmet this time. The yellow helmet is gone. He's out in pink livery. There must be a reason for that. I'm not quite sure of the significance, but it's a pink crash helmet on Steve Hislop, number two, this time. Rutter then in second. Reynolds, number one, in third. Flicking through Foggy's S's. Shane Byrne, number eight. Closing now, number 75, on the Hawk Kawasaki. Glenn Richards, who has had an admirable season. I was talking about man of the match. Sean Emmett should get it, but if I talk about man of the season, Glenn Richards, Steve, for his sheer determination riding the wheels off that Kawasaki would have to be a front runner. I agree. It really, he's done a great job on the Hawk Kawasaki. It is a 750cc four-cylinder machine. Remember, the Ducatis are all 1,000cc twins. The Yamahas and the Suzukis are 1,000cc four-cylinder bikes. So, for sure, it is down on power. It is quite an old bike. It's updated every year, but it's getting better and better, it seems. Now, we're still on board now with Michael Rutter. That's Steve Hislop in front of us. There's Rutter's shadow. You can see the sun setting behind us now. Down through Craner Curves. Rutter is fast through here. Hislop there 
there really just clipping the curb there with his knee knee on the dirt as he comes through there this is the battle for third place led at the moment by John Reynolds but look at Steve Plato who's come off the fourth row of the grid down into the old hairpin there that's where we saw Sean Emmett passing a lot of people in race one but now number four Steve Plato is on the charge yeah the one flying lap Super Bowl as we know it will be abolished for next season no one will be more relieved than number four Steve Plato who when he has luck it's mostly bad with in Super Bowl he really does have a dismal Super Bowl and as Steve said fourth row here was the best he could do at Donington so he will be mightily pleased to see the back of it but he's being hunted now by Reynolds number eight burn there's Glenn Richards this is the 26th and final race in the 2002 season and what a long long season it's been as Reynolds shows his front wheel to Steve Plater I've done some pretty quick calculations and without private testing my estimation is that these guys have each done in practice and qualifying about 2,200 miles and on top of that 1,250 or so race miles so it's been a very long season indeed and it's a testament to the powers of endurance and stamina of the riders and of course the reliability and the endurance of the machines and after all Steve this is the manufacturer's showroom very much so. The bikes you're seeing on the track now are super bikes. Remember, super bikes are modified machines that you can buy on the road, quite heavily modified, but especially number four there, Steve Plater on the R1. That bike starts off as a machine that you can just go and buy for around about £8,000, modified by the Virgin team there, and made into something like this. It's a missile out on the track, as is, of course, the Rizla Suzuki behind him. They are both very much bikes that you'll see in the car park at the racetrack here today. So they've done a great job. Look at that, and you can see Plater flipping the throttle as he comes down two gears into the old hairpin working very very hard this will be rubbing salt into the wound of John Reynolds the uh, number one plane holder there as Plater has gone past him on a very similar machine it's a two horse race at the front Hislop still in front of Michael Rutter this is one and two in the race the sun still shining on the 28,000 people here at Donington Park number six Michael Rutter would love to go out on a high and win race two here at Donington moving on to eight wins in the season to equal Steve Hislop's fantastic achievement Hislop has been the most consistent. This is the battle for third, and that's why Hislop has won the title, of course. This is the battle for third. Shane Byrne at the S is cheekily moves into fourth place ahead of John Reynolds, but waiting there as Rutter claims the lead. A look over the shoulder to Steve Hislop and lifts his rear end to Steve Hislop up towards Goddard's the left-hander. Is there a way through? Is Rutter going to keep it tight? Well, this is the view that uh, Steve Hislop gets, and there's Michael Rutter having a look over his shoulder and as you say not very aerodynamically lifting his rear has another good look over his shoulder we spoke about points not being important here today these boys are just having fun and racing in the sunshine here at Donington Park and lap records are going they're going very very fast there's no question about it well I was sure that that 133 0.47 held by Troy Corsa six years ago would have to tumble this weekend and frankly when I read about that lap record I was astonished that it hadn't gone before just look at the gap this now third place number four Steve Plater is there in third place redeeming somewhat I think poor Sean Emmett's performance with crashing out because he's waving the flag for the Virgin Mobile Yamaha team ahead of shaky burn there's John Reynolds suffering from the cold the chest cold the flu the back pain so he really is walking wounded Glenn Richards has gone past him number 75 on the hall Kawasaki is the Kawasaki the green meanie gonna go any further up the field well he smells blood here he's on the case yeah I think Shane Byrne is struggling a bit he has no setup from the first race remember we saw him crash out on the first lap so he won't have known what tires to use what suspension settings it makes a big difference if you've got one race under your belt and Shane Byrne goes down the inside stuffs it down the inside of Steve Plater a bit of a block pass there a bit uh, rough and tumble through that chicane but he's made it work and Plater has a look on the inside now as they come over the top of the hill down towards the Melbourne loop sliding in there Steve Plater said I'm having none of that and jams the big R1 down the inside look at Glenn Richards number 75 just waiting for these two because number four and number eight Plater and Burn are tripping each other up a little bit Third place here is consolation to Steve Plater, who retired in the first race, and that actually dropped him behind John Reynolds to sixth in the championship. So, number one in the back of your picture, John Reynolds leapfrogged the man in the front of your picture, Steve Plater, and it's almost Glenn Richards in the front of your picture into Redgate as he zaps past Shane Byrne. On the, he's getting really, really confident. Shane Byrne is a bit angry about that. He's riding, fighting back hard now.
Well, there's no question about it. Number 75 there, Glenn Rich is doing it on the brakes, doing it on the corners. We know he's down on horsepower a little bit. Coming out of these corners, that Kawasaki is very agile. It handles extremely well. But up the faster straights and dragging out at the slower corners, he's losing time. Shane Byrne looks like he's in trouble. Rear end of that bike, bucking and weaving and sliding around as they go one more time into that uh, McLean's corner, the bumpy corner. John Reynolds is dropping back. He must have some sort of problem. Yeah, there's no doubt. You're right, Steve. Out of the S's, Glenn Richards is particularly handicapped. And we might get a shot of that as they accelerate out of the S's. That could be where Shane Byrne nails him again on the Ducati because it does have the punch. The R1 Yamaha in the hands of Steve Plater, number four, equally. So let's watch them just out of here on the drive out of the left-hander. Does Richards drop? Well, you can see how the R1 just shoots away. But Shane Byrne, number eight on the Ducati, was not able to capitalize on it. Looking at, oh, how Chris Walker-esque is that from Glenn Richards, the rear end, backing it in on the Kawasaki. One lap to go, these are your two leaders. Out in front, it's Rutter. Is it going to be a double here for him? Steve Hislop obviously would want to go home in style. I'm sure he will. Has Steve Hislop got anything up his sleeve now as they come out of Redgate, down through Crane of Curves there? And there's no question about it, Hislop looks determined, but he doesn't want to go home in an ambulance either. There's no point in doing that at the end of the season, so he'll be trying hard, but not too hard. He's a very mature rider, Hislop, and he's very close now through the old hairpin, right on the back wheel. That's the twin pipes from the Ducati in front of us. There's a set of twin pipes blasting out the back of Hislop as he's doing everything in his power to get through to the front at the final race of the season. At McLean's then, Hislop right on the back wheel of Michael Rutter. They have a huge lead over Steve Plater in third, but there's a terrific tussle going on for third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Glenn Richards currently in fourth, it's Plater in third. We're on board with Steve Hislop making a last ditch stand up towards the S's. Nothing between these Ducatis. They're both state-of-the-art tester stretters. Hislop knows how quick and determined Rutter will be and also a very canny rider, Michael Rutter. He will hold the champion behind him if he can, and he will try down to the hairpin for the last time, the back end of the Ducati snaking. He's got to keep it tight because his slot will get the drag up the hill, as indeed does Michael Rutter. Away they go then, one last time, just one left-hander to negotiate, and we've seen it end in tears here before now, but not this time. 20 laps later, it's all done and dusted here. It's a double for Michael Rutter, a huge celebratory wheelie for the man on whom there was no pressure at all in this race. Number two, Steve Hislop. Oh, there's Glenn Richards in fourth ahead of him. Steve Plater is Shane Byrne, number eight, going to grab fourth from Richards as they sprint down towards the line. Plater gets the third spot on the rostrum, number four. Some compensation for his retirement in the first race and the typical Steve Plater celebrations. A good ride by by Richards and there with the number one plate on come on boys take the cover off it we can't see it's number one Steve they've forgotten to do that but there's Rutter he's happy I suspect in all the excitement there Steve Hislop forgot to take the sticker off the front but I'm sure it will be very prominent next year what is Shane Byrne doing he's throwing bits of his motorcycle into the crowd now I can't believe what I'm seeing here. That Grenegay team will not be at all happy about that. Those parts are very expensive. I can understand gloves, helmets and things like that being thrown in the ground. But Shane Byrne is chucking his motorcycle into the crowd. And one of his boots as well. There's only about 500 quid's worth of fairing he tossed over the fence there. A pair of boots. There's Plater. Looks as though his helmet has gone into the crowd. Uh, there's a man with no socks at all, Shane Byrne, on a dismantled motorcycle. The crowd have the rest of it as souvenirs. But there is Steve Hislop, the new champion, with a true championship wheelie. And it's only fitting that his lady and his two children are here today at Donington to witness this championship victory. A very happy man indeed, and he will be back by his own admission to defend the number one plate. But there the race result. Rutter Hislop played to Richard's a good ride, Burn Reynolds, Ellison and Crawford back to form. Let's hope we see more of the old John Crawford we've come to love in 2003. Gary Mason, ninth again. The Honda was never really on the pace this year, but maybe next year will be a different story. Crayfar, tenth. Not a good season for Simon Crayfar. There, the final analysis. Crayfar finished eighth in the title. Rutter was closing dramatically on his slot. If he'd got form earlier in the season, it might have been a different story. Well, Steve, it looked like all the battle was there in third place. Yeah, he has a good ding-dong, you know, it's just a case of, obviously, my, my Super Bowl was abysmal again. <laughs> uh, luckily, it's the last one, it's not like we're going to be doing Super Bowl next year, so it puts a big smile on my face. Um, 
just came through the pack and you know, I think one or two people made a mistake and run out the S and stuff, so it gave me a better chance to plug through. And then once I got in front of Shake into third place, I just sort of shut off really because everybody's just struggling with grip and just sort of cruise around and wait till the end. My eyes may have deceived me, but did you at one stage show Steve your, your, your bottom? Yeah, a few times, yeah, and he did. He started waving at me and things like that. It was like, kept the shake at each other's head, and it was uh, quite enjoyable. Good race. Well, the beauty of British Superbike, as Steve lifts the championship trophy, there's not a happier man in the stadium here, but the beauty of it is that they are so approachable. The crowd can smell the action, they can touch the riders, some of them will go home with souvenirs. Steve Hislop, 2002 Motorcycle News British Superbike champion. Well, Steve, a great finish to a fantastic season. You are now the champion. How's it feel? It's fantastic. I mean, it, this last few weeks, it felt like I was dragging it out and making it hard work. But, you know, I, wanted to, I came here this weekend wanting to win. I was pretty much the quickest guy all weekend, got pole position. And, I, you know, I've led both the races today. And it was just the, the bad choice of tyres, really, that threw it. But uh, at the end of the day, I've got a new lap record. I'm British champion, and it's fantastic. And you had it sewed up there in, in race one, so you did enjoy race two. Yourself and Michael Rutter having a bit of a bit of fun out there. I did. Uh, you know, I chose the wrong tyre of race one, but that second one was a wee bit better choice. Went like hell for a few laps, um, got got the lap record, and then it was kind of off by about lap seven. And I turned round, I gave Michael the thumbs up. I knew he was he was right there, you know, and it was just a laugh for the rest of the race. Tried to hang in as best I could and make it exciting. I would love to have tried to get alongside him to have dead heated on the line, but it's hard work trying to plan things like that. So fantastic race though. You know. And Michael Rutter was the first man to show the new British champion his bottom as he went by at one stage. Exactly. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's just the way he did it, it was so funny, but uh, you know, Michael it would have been a big threat had he had a, a good early start to the season. So we're going to have to do a lot of winter testing and be ready for him next year because he'll be strong. You know, he will be strong. That's the important thing. We will see you back defending that number one plate next year. You, you can bet that for sure. Um, you know, I just hope if all that in the press was a load of rubbish between me and Paul, but I would like to continue with the team. It's been a fantastic two years, really, and uh, we've capped it all now. So hopefully I'll be back to defend it. Well, it's been a fantastic season for you. It's been a fantastic racing season. We'll be back next year, of course, but before that, let's take a look at this man's season so far.